Detroit! <laughs> Welcome to the channel, Awesome Rockathon! Yeah! We got, we got our own pretty cool soundtrack going on while this is going to be playing. So, okay, um, we're getting a mic set up here so that uh, people want to ask questions, they can line up and stuff. Don't do it yet, because uh, we're going to uh, go through and we're going to introduce ourselves real fast, just so you make sure you're in the right panel. Um, this isn't the rock band? What the hell? Um, so, okay, uh, I'll start here. Uh, I am Doug Walker. I work for a website called ChannelAwesome.com. I, I have a whole bunch of different characters, including S, I got the glasses, bum reviews, video game confessions, and best known as Sasha Craig, applaud! My name is Barney Walker. I'm the reason that Doug and Rob are even here. I'm their father. And with Jim J. Roz, uh, I help manage the studio, do all the props and the costumes and everything else, and maintain 45 beautiful dresses for Tamara and 55 for Malcolm. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> My name's Rob. Um, recently I've been doing quite a bit of music on Nostalgia Critic. Um, so behind I fuck, 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 fucking love Christmas. Um, <laughs> I am responsible for that. So I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm also Jesus and Superman apparently. So that's nice. <laughs> My name is Tamara Chambers. I am dating Jesus and Superman. <laughs> I am an actress and nostalgia critic, have been for about a year, and I play fun characters like Hyper Fangirl. Watch out for her today. She's going to be roaming around your streets, invading your space. <laughs> I'm Beth. I play uh, Tambourine in the Channel Awesome Rock Band. <laughs> Actually, yeah, this is a. Uh, I am Beth. This is Tim. We host Shark Jumping. We review TV and everything TV related. And we do also have a separate panel at 4 o'clock where we'll be talking about TV. I'm Tim, and she said, and she said it all, so. <laughs> and, and I'm Malcolm Ray. I've been on uh, Channel Awesome for three years now. Coming up on three years, I do a lot of fun characters, including the devil. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Check, <laughs> check, check, We have check, Jesus check. and the devil here. There's got to be a fight going yes. on. Yeah, you got <laughs> Join me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Heather. I'm one of the newer producers on Channel Awesome. I'm known as Kaluna. I got hired last November, and I do screenshots and backlog heroes. <laughs> uh, my name's Brad Jones. I do shows like The Cinema Snob, Brad Tries. I do weird, messed up movies, stuff like that, and introducing the world to a show called Tequila and Benetti. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm the almost former nostalgia chick. <laughs> you get out of here already? Jeez! I, w I was supposed to be done by now, but I just, I'm having a really hard time finishing that last one. It's not very good. So, it's not, it's not on you. It's totally my bad, but I'm still technically part of Channel Awesome for the next week or so. We, we will keep you as long as you like to stay. Oh. One tier. Do the awe thing, come on. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then after, I, after that, I will evaporate from this planet and like, <laughs> ascend to wherever L. Ron Hubbard is. I'll be right here. <laughs> and then I will just not exist anymore. Achieve a state of clear. I will finally be. Uh, go, go for it. Yes. <laughs> and who is I'm that? Todd. Oh. <laughs> I'm Todd in the Shadows. I do Todd in the Shadows and uh, One Hit Wonderland. Okay. <laughs> Who was that masked man? I'm Rob, and I beat Doug to this planet by two whole years. Suck it, Doug. <laughs> I'm also better than Rob Scanlon and Tamara because not only am I Jesus, but I'm also Santa. Santa Christ! <laughs> and uh, that's really as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> Hi, I'm Yomars. I do a show on the site. Well, I'm one of the new producers, too. I do a show on the site where I talk about video games, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. That's my I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm Mike Wallace, and this is 60 Minutes. <laughs> Hi, I'm is Lewis Lovehug. I review comic books on the internet, and for some reason, people like that. Also, Power Rangers sometimes. <laughs> uh, 
I'm Rantasmo. I do a show called Needs More Gay, where I talk about LGBT stuff and LGBT adjacent stuff on, in the media. Very cool. Uh, before we get started, I do want to say a few things here. Uh, uh, first of all, after this, uh, we do have autograph signings. We have one today, we have one tomorrow. If you're not able to get to that or there's a long line or something like that, I just found out there is a table in the dealer's room uh, where we're going to be going in and out, signing stuff. We have merchandise, all sorts of good stuff. So if for some reason you don't get something signed, you don't get a question asked, you can come there. Uh, also know that tonight uh, we're doing a charity event, ironically called Critics Against Humanity. <laughs> But I swear it's for charity, even though it's against humanity. Um, and uh, it's for OneStepCamp.org. It's, uh, it's a charity. It's a camp for children who have cancer. And it's a wonderful organization. We've been there. It's fantastic. We would love for you guys to come and support a really, really great cause. So uh, right now, we are going to do our Q&A. We have a microphone set up here. Just get in line if you have a question. And you can ask absolutely anyone at all. I want to hear from Macho Man first, OK? Yeah. Uh, although I want to hear from Sexy Beelge a second. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, a sharp and tight Slim Jim. Yes. Okay. All right, there's a two-parter here. Uh, <laughs> one for Brad and one for Todd there. Uh, Brad, are you ever going to get around to doing hentai at a certain point? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, Jillian owns all of those. <laughs> <laughs> If I can pry it from her. <laughs> I don't know. I, I doubt it, honestly. And, Too uh, many E.T. stuff to watch. <laughs> I understand, but I don't want to know. <laughs> and uh, you, Mr. Shadow Man there, when are you going to ever do my CD? I was wondering if you are going to ask about that. <laughs> well, I'm asking. It's, uh... I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> It's on, pretty uh, amazing. Good I don't answer. even know. It's <laughs> 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 you out. Hold on, but before you leave, is there something perhaps we should snap into, uh, uh, perhaps to uh, leave us with? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you gotta prepare for it. You gotta build it up. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a coming. <laughs> That's also what she said. 1980s technology. <laughs> what? <laughs> Want some excitement? <laughs> Stab it to a Slim Jim! Woo! Yeah! Woo, yeah. Now, I'm sorry to interrupt your joke, but that was <laughs> snapping to a Slim Jim. I'm sorry. Nobody can compete with that. <laughs> so, go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering if anybody has any like interesting stories about introducing uh, what they do now to like their extended family or something like that. They're like, oh, so what are you up to? Oh, I'm uh, doing this thing. <laughs> um, I, we, we can probably go down the line for this. Uh, yeah. I, I can just say... My, uh, my oh, dad is well. super proud of what I do and uh, shows it to every single person he knows, including my extended family. If anyone asks, I just tell them I'm a freelance writer and don't go into details, but dad is uh, like, here, here's one where he rubs a cheeseburger all over himself. <laughs> <laughs> and... Just as a bit of advice, if you end up doing something like this, don't tell your extended family you're in online media. They're immediately going to think you're in porn. Yeah. That yeah. Right. Well, no, because oh. that's what happened with me. I told my dad I really want to do a career in online media, and he said, well, can I be a part of it? I said, absolutely. And the next day he showed up naked, and I said, I think we got the wrong idea. <laughs> well, even... <laughs> Even weirder, if you want a true story, our mother consistently gets upset because she's like, I want to show all my friends what you guys do, and I can't show it to my church group friends. <laughs> You're always swearing. So basically, we just give her links to, like, Disney cartoons and insist that it's us. <laughs> my dad always wants to play future Linkara. <laughs> It is a constant thing where, where even, even we had, like, brief plans for an April Fool's video, which I had to scrap because I was just so overworked with everything else I needed to do, where he would draw like a quick comic and then he would do a, a like future Linkara like 
Final Crisis or something, and it, it is just like, Dad, I don't have time for this. No, no, I can do this. I can get this done for you. No, no, I, I don't. I don't have time for this. No, I can do this. I want to do Future Lakara. Where's Future Lakara gonna appear again? <laughs> I um I don't think my dad understands what I do, but I also don't understand supply chain management, so <laughs> it's an even trade off. Anyone else, Malcolm? Uh, sometimes my family finds it hard to take me seriously when I tell them what I do. It's like kind of hard to explain exactly what I do. I said I'm an actor, you know, but you know on the internet, and again they immediately think you know porn, but no, I you know. <clears throat> Because, you know, I do stuff, you know, on real world media, like, you know, I do acting with my agency in Chicago, but then, you know, there's new media, so it's kind of like this new, this new industry that's, you know, kind of blurring front, lines yeah. with, with acting. And like a new frontier that no one understands. Right, in your extended right. extended family. Right, and yeah. so you have to show them, and then they're like, oh, that's really cool, and, really? you know, as opposed to explaining. It's like, I can show you better than I can, better than I can tell you. It is porn, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> I told my parents that I was doing Nostalgia Critic, and they were like, it's not on Facebook. We can't find it. It's not on Facebook. <laughs> and so I sent them a link to the first one I showed them was, uh, was Ghost Dad, and I played Sexy Dorothy, and my mom was like, I don't get it. <laughs> Actually, speaking of Facebook, it actually was a really positive experience because through being online, I was able to teach my Grammy not only how to get on Facebook, but how to use inter internet in general. So. But not how to say internet. In, 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 in. Now, yeah, now, yeah, no, that's my... I'm a dick, sorry. Oh. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you how to get on the good side of their parents. Rob and Doug's mother said, why do you have to use all those words? Those nasty, nasty words. So, four years ago, Doug compiled a whole bunch of emails of people who would email and say, I was having a rough time, my mother died and everything. Watching you really made it work. I was committing, thinking of committing suicide and stuff and watching your humor talk me out of it. And he put it together in a book called They All Like the F Word and <laughs> gave it to his mother. We are now on the fourth year of that book and she absolutely loves it. And she says, Doug, it's okay if you say that word f f <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is porn. <laughs> Go on. They know what I do. Uh, actually, my folks check it out every now and then. Uh, they're fine. My my grandparents, on the other hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, my grandma would come up, uh, used to come up to me and say stuff like, uh, oh, when are you going to do something that your grandparents can watch? Still hasn't happened. Um, and I would be like, what? You can't watch the movie I made about snuff filmmakers and the porn industry? I mean, come on. That's only a total hard R. <laughs> it's not an X. What? <laughs> so they, they, they know. And those in my extended family would just be like, uh, I... I I make mo I make movies. <laughs> Search for it on the internet; you might find it. <laughs> I want to know how weird the music got when Brad was talking. You listen to it over there. <laughs> cool. Anyone else? We good? All right. Uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you so much for the question. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, hi everyone. Hi. Hello. Hey. Um, before I get started, uh, Todd, I tweeted you about possibly giving a dog toy to Kelly, and I fucking came through with that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> that could have gone good. very badly. You break it, you pay for it. <laughs> for the future, you can walk up here. <laughs> Nish, then. When Todd Nish, likes Frankenstein. Nish. Nish. <laughs> Nish. I, I played 10 years of Jupiter softball. Sending I wasn't going to miss. <laughs> yeah. When Todd like Frankenstein extends his hand and goes, uh, uh, you don't need to throw it. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to know um, how many of you guys have experiences with Patreon and if that's helped you make your videos any better or worse. <laughs> I, I have, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I was able to, two, two years ago, I was at like 38,000 subscribers on YouTube, and Patreon existing, um, created by my friend Jack Conte, 
having that exist was how I was able to go full time. So since Patreon came about um, is when I was able to really dive into it and do it with all my time. So I say I super recommend it right now. Um, for me, it's it's the way to get upfront funding, and yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. Super duper flooper recommend it. <laughs> Patreon has has guaranteed that I will never sleep a wink ever again. <laughs> However, on the other hand, it has also guaranteed that I will never hear the words "When's the next history of Power Rangers coming out?" because I have actual release dates now. And it's become my primary uh, uh, source of revenue because Blip has kind of taken a downturn, and I'm trying to fix that by going to a different video platform. But, it, but yeah, Patreon has really helped and, and done a lot of good for me. So there you go. I, I remember when James did his uh, Indiegogo for the, for the movie, and when it got done, like, you know, like he did a video of him spitting his drink out, seeing how much he made. He just looks at this large pile of autographs he has to sign. He's like... Okay, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't sound like much. Good. Well, you're just signing, but it's like we've all kind of done that. It's it's more than you think. It's definitely a lot. So yeah, I, I honestly kind of I recommend against physical rewards. <laughs> yeah. I think it's. I mean, it's just like I, I keep my reward level level super low, and it's just like you can get like sources and further reading and that's what you get for, but like I it's a lot less stressful because it's like it's stressful enough trying to stick to a schedule and, and, and to, saves your writing hand too because yeah. <laughs> I was having some serious premiere problems even with the thank yous <laughs> <laughs> like in that like getting stiff out on time but it it, it, it definitely helps me be more uh, consistent and you know be incentivized to step up my game that Patreon's the reason why I'm not in jail right now <laughs> <laughs> He's Thank you, IRS. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I just, one, one final thing. I think they're playing Silent Hill music over there, which makes me very sad considering like both concerts featuring Akira Yamaoka and uh, Mary Elizabeth uh, McGlynn are at the same time I have panels, and this is all your fault, Doug. <laughs> You're welcome. It's not, really, it's not really, but I'm going to blame you anyway because we always blame you for everything. I'm used to it. <laughs> No, I like that attitude. <laughs> Patreon's helped us out a lot. Like in in our case, the funds like it's helped us out in the sense that everything we get from Patreon, a lot, most of it goes towards the other people in my in my group. All oh, the yeah, other, yeah. It's like, all, we can pay people now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. rather than like it's every month instead of on my whims. Right, and now it's much easier to talk them into seeing the new Tyler Perry movie of the week. <laughs> um, and we can also fund a much more ambitious projects with it like different animation shows that we're working on and, and th things that we've always wanted to do. Every now and then we'll get a complaint about Patreon, but it's just, some, ugh, I can't believe I have to wait a week to see your vlog on Breakfast Club. Like, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Nice. Uh, I'm going to say, er everyone else that comes up, the microphone is, is very low, you know, the height's different, so just try to speak very closely into the mic. <laughs> Um, hello. Um, I just that is not speaking very closely into the mic. Hello. There okay. you go. <laughs> all right. So I just wanted to say first of all that I started watching a Soldier Critic like last week, and I think it's a really cool like wow. show. And I just wanted to say that I really like like what you guys are doing. Oh, thank you. Thanks and. So you know, Nostalgia Critic is like a it's a show about movies, and I and you know I was thinking like, if it's a show about movies, you guys have to know about like Lars von Trier, right? Uh, well, which one? <laughs> Lars von Trier. Well, it sounds Lars von Trier. 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 Trier? Oh, a, I I've always heard it as Trier, but. Danish filmmaker, pretty edgy. So, <laughs> well, 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 what's he done? What's he filmed? He's done um, uh, Melancholia, Nymphomania, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, Christ, I know guy, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was just wondering, what's your favorite Lars von Trier movie? Well, seeing how that's the only one I've seen, I'll say that one. <laughs> Anyone else seen his stuff or have a favorite film? Kyle has done a few Lars von Trier movies. Uh, one of which, uh, I think, is one of his first ones, Antichrist. That's the one about the talking fox and the woman who um, does unspeakable things to her husband's... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it's a pretty, Check your local pretty rough movie. It's a family <laughs> picture. <laughs> I like Dogville a lot. Uh, yeah, that's a good oh, that's not, there's no dogs in it. 
Um, so yeah. <laughs> Wait, did he also do Dancer in the Dark? I, I honestly what? couldn't hear the question. Did he do Dancer in the Dark or no? Yeah, he did Dancer in the Dark. Oh, I, I hate that movie. <laughs> oh, come on. I love it was Bjork so good, though. I love Bjork in it. Yeah, uh, Bjork is great. Which is so rare. You think I'd say, I love the director, but I hate Bjork, but it's the exact opposite. No. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, but no, I, I actually did like the, the, I can never say the title, the Chris and Dunn's End of the World one. Uh, yeah. I, I did like that. Uh, a little long, but but I did like that. Uh, anyone else seen a film that got a comment on? Okay, okay cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Critic, what is your favorite villain? My favorite vi like in movies or? Comic books. In, in comic books? Uh, oh, I got, oh man, that's such a Lewis question. Lewis, answer it well, I think. Uh, 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 Darth Vader, no wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's a lot of really great villains out there. Uh, Doug, this is a question for you anyway, so yeah. answer it. Answer it! Uh, you know what, uh, to toss up, uh, a toss up between the Joker and Catwoman. Uh, Joker, cause he's the exact. Melvin. What? What's it? Uh, Which one? Uh, oh, it's not Melvin. Oh, Melvin. <laughs> yeah, no. Wait till he gets a spin-off series. You know? Come on. The comic's coming. Um, but no, it's uh, I love Joker because he's the exact opposite of Batman. He's bright and colorful. And he's a bad guy. And I, I love Catwoman because it's like she almost could have been like Batman. She could have been the vigilante for good, but it's like she just doesn't quite agree with the law, so she does things her own way, and it's like, I like how sometimes she's a villain, sometimes she's not, so it's it's a toss-up between those two. I, I think those two uh, got a lot of potential, and there's so much fun to read about all the time. Two-Face is pretty cool, too. So, they're all the Batman ones. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. You've been doing a lot of reviews for TV shows and vlogs, and I thought I could go and get you, in, get you interested in another show, so... I decided to go and... You, you got a show there? You got a sample? It's not ticking, is it? <laughs> Ooh, a DVD from Target! It must be good! <laughs> yeah, okay, it's Steven Universe. Yeah. yeah! That show's amazing! Yeah, you, you know, the funny thing is, everyone's like, are you, you know, people have asked him, I gotta do Steven Universe for a while, and then like, some sort of episode hit where like my Facebook is filled with people saying, you have to do Steven Universe, the episode just came out, whatever. And sure, I was at a convention a few weeks ago when I, that's the only way I watch cartoons anymore. I turn on the TV, it's like, oh, cartoons are on. Um, and uh, they, I think they showed the episode that like everyone was talking about. I'm like, oh, well, there went that surprise. But, uh, but it was still really cool and I was intrigued. And what I, I watched a little bit more and I, I was really liking it. I, I love what they do with identity in that movie. They really play with identity in a way that's like, God, that's almost like Kafka-esque. I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, I think I am going to. Uh, and, and this is really going to help me watch that. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, this one's, this one's kind of for everybody. Like, I know stories of The Room and uh, Grizzly 2, but there are other people who threaten legal action against you because they didn't like your opinion of their review. Oh, we're, we're having a lot of that right now, actually. Uh, well, no, I shouldn't say that. Not from actual people, but from the robots that they programmed to yeah. say, take down if this play. Uh, so, Is this on YouTube? Uh, yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, not Blip. Yes. Uh, Is it the Super Critics or the other? Yeah, no. Uh, we yeah, haven't, uh, on Blip, we haven't really had that many. We had Tommy and I think, like, at least for me, uh, Tommy and like maybe one or two other people, but it's not coming to my head who, uh, but on YouTube, because it's, it's bigger and wider and they, again, they got the robots to track stuff that's already online. Um, we're getting it more and some we're winning, some we're losing, some are just this really long battle, but again, that is a nice thing. I mean, they're, they're on the website, they're on Blip and everything, so yeah, since we've gone on YouTube, we tackled it a lot more, but thankfully only on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, I, I know other people have had like run-ins before and stuff. Where I, yeah, I definitely know. Is it? Or, or, was it Super Critics or the other one, Channel Awesome? No, the Super Critics. I'm, yeah. Brad and I have never had problems on. Well, no, no, no. But, but <laughs> did you have one, Brad? Have like one really? of the filmmakers yeah. oh, okay. had something Thanks or something? Problem. Oh well, years and years ago, uh, when I was originally on YouTube, so back like in '08 or '09, there was an issue with uh, the company or the people that made Nail Gun Massacre. <laughs> that masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was the. It, I, I think it was the DVD company. I think anyway, they had it taken down, and that was the reason why I moved over to Blip and started my own site. 
That was. So oh wait, no, there was the Grizzly Two thing. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh I know okay. One. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Grizzly Two, but that was kind of a gray area because that movie. I did an episode on an unreleased movie called Grizzly Two, but it's an easy movie to find. You can, you can go to about any convention and find a copy of Grizzly Two sitting there. Um, it's and so I did an episode on it, and the the lady who produced it, she's like a, a Hungarian art dealer or something like that. She yeah, uh, right. she sent me a message, a really angry message. <laughs> um, that at first I thought it was someone screwing with me, but then I looked her up. I'm like, wow, she's she really likes this movie, I guess. <laughs> um, and anyway, so I ended, I got some advice, and, and I got some advice, and I, I ended up taking it down, and mysteriously, it ended up on YouTube. And ooh, how did I get there? Yeah. So, uh, but at that point, the video had been up a while. I'd already made whatever revenue I'd make off of it. So, whatever. But and then at one point, I ended up getting a voicemail from her. She ended up finding my phone number, and the voicemail message was actually really nice, which means someone probably advised her like maybe you should ask him nicely. <laughs> and then she sent me a friend request once on like Facebook. <laughs> like, so I guess we're friends now. I, I don't know. <laughs> Never any of the comic reviews have I had problems, but since I've been started uploading stuff to YouTube, I've had the occasional stuff where like, well, I gotta replace the music and stuff like that. But you'll notice that there's one big shining omission from my YouTube page, which is History of Power Rangers. And that's because History of Power Rangers was on YouTube for a bit, and then Toei took it down. Mm. And I got two copyright strikes on my account for it that lasted a whole year. Uh, so I'm working, and it's not Saban. I actually contacted Saban and asked him, could you tell Toei, could you ask Toei to calm down? And said, oh yeah, sure, we'll do that for you, because Saban actually likes me, and they like me doing History of Power Rangers because it's free promotion for their product. Mm -hmm. But Toei and Japanese companies don't really care, and they don't really like or get YouTube. Uh, so basically, and since there's Sentai footage inside of History of Power Rangers, you know, to be used for Power Rangers, uh, they took them down, gave me copyright strikes, and I did the whole process you're supposed to do with, with the exception of the final step, which is the go ahead and sue me option because my, uh, my YouTube network advised me against it. But right now I'm working on uploading a uh, revised version of History of Power Rangers that's pretty much audio only except for uh, 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 the actual Ranger clips, you know, where I actually use a clip from the show, and even then I'm going to keep it to just the American footage. Right. So yeah. I had the same issue when I put up the first episode. Yeah, a little closer. <coughs> I had the same issue when I uh, put up my first episode of my Let's Play series because it was a game based on an anime and it uses the anime opening. So the anime company thought I was uploading uh, their anime episode, and I went, "No, no, I promise I'm not." But then they gave me a copyright strike anyway, and it took a month because I had to go, I had to write the emails in Japanese. <laughs> so, oh. I, <laughs> so I had that to like I had fun. to consult my friend because it was in Japanese legal terms. Which is even harder to read. So, but it, it did eventually, I had to go through the whole thing and like my account was affected by it and I only upload to YouTube so I had to like adjust how long my videos were because if you have one copyright strike, uh, they force your videos to be only 15 minutes long and oh. my videos generally aren't 15 minutes so I had to divide them into parts for a couple of weeks. I didn't know that. But eventually it all worked out because they just were like, oh, okay, whatever, and then they let it go. <laughs> So, cool, cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, uh, first I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Channel Awesome. I don't, I don't know who was responsible, but uh, back in 2008, I had an opportunity to be on one of the earlier podcasts for Channel Awesome. Uh, there was a contest where we had to do like mini, a mini podcast for the masterpiece Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And for some reason, I was picked, so I was on that. So it was cool to just to be a part of that just for a little while. Oh, so, awesome. Congrats, man. Yeah. Cool. And um, I also want to thank you guys for... You guys are entertaining. You guys have put me through like hours of college. I'm finishing up my bachelor's right now at Lawrence Tech. We gave you a grant? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you guys, no, but you guys have um, entertained me for so many hours. If I don't want to do homework or something, I just watch you guys for hours. So thanks. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad we helped with that. <laughs> don't do your homework, kids. Watch us instead. Channel Awesome. We help you procrastinate. <laughs> Well, I've got a I've got a 3.7 grade average, so I'm still doing pretty well. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, no, thank you guys. Really, you guys are all awesome, and I've watched probably 90% of your your guys' stuff, and you guys are really entertaining. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. This thank question you. is for pretty much all of you guys. I have a very weird taste in movies. Uh, my favorite Indiana Jones is actually Temple of Doom. Um, and I'm <laughs> hell yeah. Brad, man. shut up, Brad. I know what you're thinking, Brad. Don't say it. 
And it's not a nostalgia thing. I'm genuinely, that is my favorite one for many reasons. I can argue that movie to the death. But I'm one of the few people that actually liked the Michael Bay Turtles movie, despite its flaws. So I'm just curious to hear from all of you guys, what is your favorite in, in person, um, your favorite version of the Turtles? Uh, I, I really like, I like that the one. movie. <laughs> you really like that one? I, I feel like I could write a master's thesis on the portrayal of April in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I find it it's so deeply fascinating. Like, the way that they write her. Just from a screenplay perspective. Like, they didn't know what to do with her femaleness. So they're like, I guess no one respects her because she's hot? <laughs> That's how it's like, right? Uh, I forget. Oh, the... Uh, I- I'd, I'd probably say the, uh, the the first movie I do like because that seemed like the perfect combination of really goofy, stupid, but we're also kind of taking it seriously too, and being really cartoony but really kind of badass at the same time. Uh, so I'd, I'd I, actually I haven't seen the newer ones though. I haven't seen like the new cartoon. I'd actually be with Doug on that, just because whenever I look at the New Line Cinema film, it's just like there's no way this should have ever been made. Like it's almost an impossible task, and somehow they came out with this dark, gritty, semi-independent film with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Jim Henson doing the costumes. Like, who does that? Yeah, just like, I just gotta all, respect yeah. that it came out at all. As for the Bay film, I, it, it, I was shocked when I watched it with Doug for the review, and we both kind of looked at each other and we're, we're like, this is not as bad as it could have been. Like, we didn't like it by any stretch of imagination, but in the end, we were both kind of like, yeah, that was meh. But it really wasn't god-awful, so, like, I guess that's the best I can say about it. It also wasn't Bay. Like, yeah, no, he, he produced that. Yeah, it's like if you watch it, it has like almost none of the Bay-isms. You know, like the cinematography is different. The pace is different. Uh, no, like, it's still slow-mo. <coughs> the pepe, pepe, slow-mo. That's not a Bay thing, really. I don't know. I thought he's done a lot, man. Well, he's done it, but like his, his cinematography is not there. You it's, can see it. I'll it doesn't that. feel like a Bay movie to me. So, yeah. I had... I had that seeing that movie in the theater and the uh, movie aside was just such an annoying experience because <laughs> here's what happened we go we go see it on the pre-screening and it is a crowded theater with a lot of babies in it and uh, oh man so PG-13 film yeah bring it <laughs> and so uh, we were at the 3D screening for it but they had accidentally started showing the 2D version whatever we didn't say anything we were just like okay I'll just take my glasses off and um then the, it's about 45 minutes into the movie. Suddenly the movie stops, and the manager comes out and says, Yeah, uh, we accidentally started showing the wrong print of the movie, so we're just going to start it back over again from the beginning of it. <laughs> Fuck. And so I got up and like spent 45 minutes in the arcade <laughs> uh, and just waited for the movie to catch up to that point. So I was there for like four hours to see Ninja Turtles. <laughs> My favorite iteration of the Turtles is the next mutation. <laughs> I was expecting more people to like react to that. No, no actually, my favorite is uh, the 2002-2003 uh, 2003 series. I can't remember which one what, what uh, year it started. Uh, the one that was that lasted actually quite a few years. Uh, now, mind you, I haven't watched it in years and years, so it's possible that at, that has changed. I grew up with the with the '89 Turtles a bit, uh, but I wasn't as hardcore into it as like my brother was. But I really started to get into the 2002-2003 series. Anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else got a turtle thought? Uh, let's see. The first uh, series that I was introduced to uh, was the 2003 version. Um, that was a pretty strong series in of itself. I think it had really good writing, and it kind of um, summarized all of the lore of the turtles. Cool. Yeah. Anyone else? Cool, cool. Uh, oh, do you have one? Am I the only one who likes when the turtles had a band? <laughs> <laughs> Pizza power. <laughs> yeah, oh, you have Where some homework to do. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I mean, there was a rumor going around that it was the new kids on the block in the costumes because they were about to be phased out. So. <laughs> I was going to say that their collab with Vanilla Ice was <laughs> the peak. <laughs> so, very cool. Uh, thanks so much, man. Thanks, guys. Me again. Hi. Hey, um, two questions. One for you, Doug. How should I go about taking over the world? Um, it, just ask everybody if they would like you as the ruler, see if that works. <laughs> Nobody ever okay, that. okay, first thing you gotta do is you gotta call all your friends and say it's time. <laughs> I, I, I was asking Cause, for... Cause nobody was, ever does that. It's always like, I need a death ray or I need terrorism. Just ask people, you never know. I, they I, might I, like you. <laughs> 
Uh, if you didn't know it, I was referencing that April Fool's Day episode you did a while, yeah. a couple years ago. So, yeah, but, there you go, man. I know, but the real question is, the cartoon, uh, here a little closer to uh, the mic. Sir. Cartoon seems to always have a renaissance of good shows, and all of a sudden they get the juvenile shows, and then they all copy all of that. Why do you think that is? Where we always seem to go to peak of really smartly written cartoon shows that are challenging the notion of cartoons are for kids. Then all of a sudden we go the completely opposite direction of like, oh, we got to emulate SpongeBob and just go for the low common denominator joke. Like, well, you know, I think uh, I, I started an editorial about this too. Sort of like the, the dark age of movies, as I call it, where yeah. movies were just awful for like a solid five years and we got like no good films. Uh, I think it's just peaks and valleys. I think, I mean, from a marketing standpoint, people just see something that works. And it's like, how long can we ride that? And people are still selling Frozen merchandise, like all over the place. Was I like two years old now? And it's still like, I was just at Disney World when Let It Go came out. All the kids are still saying it, like every freaking kid. So they're just going to ride it until it works. Um, and I think it's sort of the same thing where it's like, if you don't have to try as hard with something, but why try as hard? You know, you can work on something else to get off the ground, put a lot of effort into that. But something like Frozen that's already popular, we can throw whatever together. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just peaks and valleys, and it's just different people, different folks. And if something's starting to die out, you try something different and see how long you can write it out. Like what this Teen Titans new show, it's like <sighs> a, apparently not like the original Teen Titans and people are pissed off, but are people like, no, it's something totally different. And it's like Rand Stimpy humor and I love Rand Stimpy. So it's like, I don't like either show, so it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> but, um, but it's the same idea. It's like, hey, let's try something totally different because this still has a fan base. But it's, you know, we want to write it as long as we can as well and try something different. Um, anyone else? I was asking, that was for everyone, actually. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? <laughs> um, animation is a really fascinating medium in that there's no limit to what you can create and what it can represent. But where it really all depends on is what the creator has in mind. Um, you can create, if you have the imagination, you have the drive, and you have the time, you can create a really amazing product that defies the odds. Like, my favorite show always will be is Futurama. Because it just, yeah. yay! <laughs> because of just, they didn't have any limits to what they could do, and so they did everything that they could think of. But at the same time, if you're thinking, oh, animation just equals it's for kids, or it equals something that we don't have to really put a lot of thought into it, we just put it out quickly, then that's when you're gonna have something that's not gonna have lasting power. Right. You know, it's always a constant battle. We like to think of it as a modern thing, like, why is there so much crap now? There's been crap forever. Um, and particularly like with something like animation, there's always that battle waged between, well, why don't we just throw something out there for the lowest common denominator, they'll rake in the bucks quick, and people are just like, no, let's do something really amazing and throw everything we can in it, and sometimes the two collide. To this day, I'll never quite understand why the Saturday morning version of Sonic the Hedgehog is so incredible. <laughs> By all rights, it should have been stupid, just like the afternoon show, but yet they somehow slipped something amazing through with what should have been just a video game character knockoff. So it just really depends. I don't think there's any sort of magic formula or cabal of people secretly trying to destroy animation or, you know, rise it up. It just, you deal with the dice, you know, in the hand that you're dealt, so. Toys. Cool. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Lizzie, just like toys, all comes down to toys. No, it does. <laughs> well, especially in the 80s. Well, no, now, now it's like, that, that's, that's, that is what gets made, is like, does it sell toys? What's the demographic? Yeah. That's oh, why, yeah, like, you know, yeah, it's like, is it, you know, they want shows for boys. And they want shows for a specific, the, like, was it 8 to 12 that buys the most toys? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's like, and that will, what show gets made and what show stays on the air. That's why shows tend not to last more than three years. Depends on, will boys buy toys? And then you'll have, like, the extremely rare girl thing, which like, would be in the form of My Little Pony, which is something. No, no, even the boys took that one over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a, an outlier and should not be counted. But, like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I also think that, like, just because there are so many services now, like, just competition is driving quality up. I don't understand why people think that things are getting worse. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> TV right now is amazing. I think animation's kind of in a golden age right now, even for children. It's I, like, I all, <laughs> all TV right, right now. Yeah, yeah, it's so just like, better. there's just too much competition. If you want to be seen, you have to be better. And like, yeah. that applies to like all genres, including animation. Yeah. But I, you also have to sell toys. I'm glad Lindsay brought up brought up the, uh, the, the the boys' toys demographic thing. Who here was a fan of Young Justice? I was. <laughs> yeah, Young Justice got canceled because it was more popular with girls than with boys. No, and no, it wasn't even. It was like it was approaching parody. It was still a mostly male audience, but they didn't like that it was approaching parody. It was like 45 female, and that was hmm. too much. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that, yes. I think I think you your know point... we should cancel My Little Pony because of that. You know, uh, mostly male audience. I don't know, making us money, but. Well, and Lindsay's got a great point, too, about being in a golden age, because, listen, I grew up in the 80s, and I have a lot of nostalgic attachment to those cartoons, but what the hell was going on in the 80s? Like, when I look at it, I was like, there's, there's a few shows that are great, but there's nothing here, and I look at everything that's on now, and even the bad shows, at least the animation quality on them is up through the roof, so... No, it really is a golden age. So, like I said, in the dark age of film, you know, to fucking appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Game of Thrones is out on Sunday. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So thank, cool. Thank you so thank, much. Yep, thank you very much. Um, hi, um, I got a question, like mostly for Blink Car, but also, I guess, you know, in general, what do you guys think about Marvel killing off Deadpool? When, when did uh, spoilers? There was a comic this week that came out. He died. When did Wolverine? Johnny Storm, <laughs> The Hulk, Captain America, yeah. Iron Man. <laughs> are, are you seeing the point I'm making here? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he'll be okay. okay. <laughs> um, also, Donatello's gone too. Uh, no, um, yeah. also, Who makes the money? He's going to be back. And in fact, he's probably going to be back just as soon as, as uh, Secret Wars is over with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just when the like, Captain America oh, was only no. dead for like nine months. It's oh. like you, the oh, only I was wasn't aware of Captain America. I can't remember. Was Batman dead for the same amount of time? Uh, how many times has he been dead? Uh, only once, technically. Oh. Tech, uh, about a year. Okay. Oh, was it that long? Wow. The only Marvel characters that stay dead are Gwen Stacy and Uncle Ben. <laughs> it's true. Bucky used to be on that list too, but then they brought Bucky back. Yeah. Hey, hey, too soon. Too okay. soon. <laughs> um, also, semi. <laughs> also, kind of not serious, but kind of. Would you guys consider hiring Movie Bob to channel Awesome because he got fired from The Escapist? Uh, I well, look him up. We don't make <laughs> we don't make those decisions, but I but but I'm friends with Movie Bob, so I, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, I'll, I'll at least look him up. <laughs> okay. Um, so, thanks anyway. Absolutely. Take care. No comment. <laughs> All right, um, this is to uh, Brad. Yes, um, my name's uh, Bill Carter. I'm on the metal cast on Geek Juice. Oh, right on. All right, um, would you ever consider doing uh, Death Race 2000? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, you should totally do that also comparing that Death Race 2000 is awesome. <laughs> but also comparing it to the newer one that they came out. Oh, the Statham one? Yeah, that just blue. as a yeah. yeah. Dumb comparison. It was this death race, but it was like in name only that it had anything to do with it. that, and like they call him Frankenstein. But the new one, it's like, oh yeah, they're. Pre it's like the Running Man with cars. The new one was the original's fantastic. <laughs> the oh yeah, absolutely. And did you ever see the pseudo sequel Death Sport, where they're on motorcycles with like. Laser I guns think on I it. I saw it with my dad when I was five. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I would absolutely do Death Race 2000. The quality of movies my dad let me watch when I was five. So <laughs> my dad introduced me to Death Race 2000. My dad was like, "You ever see the David Carradine movie where they run over people with cars for points?" I'm like ten. <laughs> like no, but I will. Yeah, I walked, in, I walked in at eleven. I'm like, "What are you watching?" He goes, "Death Race." He goes, "What did they do?" He they kill people with cars for points. I'm like, "Really." You don't. You could do that. Wow. I'm gonna start watching sports now. Your father is in, Your father is insane. My waited until we were 12, my friend. Okay. <laughs> that must be like. A I sick became dad a man thing. that yeah. day. <laughs> that must be a sick dad thing, cause yeah, like everyone's like, yeah, my dad showed me this when I was like five or something. Like just every dad wants to introduce their kid to that, cause there's some sort of sick father-son bond there for some reason. I don't know, but yeah. Before the mothers can spoil you. Yes. <laughs> it was always. It was always before. Like, all right, your mom's getting home from work, and all right, let's put the. Movie yeah, that's all. That's how it went. That's how it went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Thank you so much. I've been standing here for about 30 minutes. Now I'm nervous. Anyway, um, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know I've been watching Channel Awesome for about five years now. And um, I wanted We're to very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, we no, can no, give no, you a medicine no, for no, that. No, 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 no. I want 
wanted to thank you guys, mainly Doug and Lewis, because Doug, you made me have a deeper appreciation for movies and to really think about what I'm watching more often, because I was 15 at that point. And Lewis, I wanted to thank you because you made me really want to get into the comic book world, and I love watching your show. Again, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Shush, I love listening to you. Anyway. Well, thank you. I have um, one small thing to ask. Um, if you have not noticed, you are being recorded. Um, I have... <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> they, I'm always being recorded. Yes, they're I always know. watching. <laughs> um, uh, for a few years now, um, I've been struggling with anxiety. Um, and I was wondering if you guys could have, like, um, have something to say to the people like in this room and out in the world that are watching whenever. Um, for those who have anxiety issues, do you have anything like encouraging or something to say to them? You know. Uh, you know, I can I can say uh, one thing. Uh, what I did, I used to sing at recitals, um, and uh, cause my music teachers really liked me. It was like singing this recital, and most of the people were not very good. And I was usually the best, uh, but then one recital, guy went up, knocked it out of the park, and he was be a lot better than me. And I was so nervous. This is only like the second one I've ever done. I was so nervous. I went up and I actually closed my eyes to sing. And my teacher said, well, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? And I said, I was just, I don't know. I felt like it was the only way I could do it. And she said, you know, random thing about just, just do it. Go have fun. Just do it. If you have fun with it, everyone else has fun with it. If you close your eyes, you know, you don't see them and they don't see you and you don't want that. You're up there for a reason. Just have fun and have other people have fun with you. And not everyone's going to be on board, but, you know, some will. And those are the people you want to be friends with and you want to entertain. Uh, so that's kind of the thing. I still get nervous before I perform or before I do something. But some sort of emergency backup clicks in and says, okay, fear later. You can worry about that later. Right now you're performing. You're having fun. Don't let them see that, you know, you're actually terrified. <laughs> so that I, I get the anxiety too. But there is some sort of, like, just click that says, have fun. You owe it to people to have fun. They're there to have fun with you, you know. So rather than thinking of performing, it's you're sharing the fun. So that's the best way I can put it. Anyone else Do you mean performance anxiety or? No, actually, <laughs> um, performance anxiety is also a part of it. But actually, it's anxiety itself, like anxiety mm -hmm. over your family, like worrying about your siblings and parents and stuff sometimes. Worrying about your own safety in situations. Like, for example, this is my second con. And the first con, I was in tears when I came here. I was so scared. I was for YumaCon. Are you? Are you, uh, don't feel, feel free not to answer this, but are you diagnosed with anything? No, I am not. My um, parents don't really believe in diagnostics mm. like that. Well, you know, you're of age, you could check it out. True. Like, uh, like, one of my best friends is uh, obsessive compulsive, and that, like, actually obsessive compulsive, like, in a diagnosed, like, and that is an anxiety disorder. Yes. And uh, she, well, you, you probably know her, her name's Mara Wilson, and she's writing a book, and a lot of it is going to be about uh, her dealing with that. And trying to explain just like the inability to get people to understand uh, why you're freaking out when other people are dealing with a type of stimulus that is completely acceptable to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but to answer your question, destigmatize medication, <laughs> medication, and medication. <laughs> and if I'm, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like therapy seriously. too. If well, anxiety? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm not it depends. Like that. some, like. Mara does therapy for anxiety. Not everyone needs it. You know, like some people, like just a low dose Zoloft does well. I take Xanax, um, and not, you don't, not every day, <laughs> because that stuff's really addictive. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's just that. That's that. Yes, medication. Uh, yeah, I was gonna, gonna say uh, uh, just in general. That's basically my advice because I'm not familiar enough with it with the medical diagnosis of it. It basically just down to medication and. Uh, uh, do whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable. And if I could throw something in, when I was a little kid, um, I used to perform in church or in rites recitals. I would cry in the car and scream. They'd have to drag me out because I didn't want to do it because I was so nervous just about being in front of people, interacting with people. And something that I was told that always resonated with me is every single person who is doing something with you has done it for the first time at some point. Every single person up here has done what they're doing for the first time. Every single person who's standing in front to ask a question has done it at some point for the first time. And so anytime that you're feeling you know, nervous or anxious about anything you're experiencing, every person who's doing it with you has been in that exact same place. Mm. It's a very good way. Listen to them. They, they, they know what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> but don't. And if I could touch on don't, that. Don't be ashamed to just 
you know, go to a doctor and get a diagnosis or several. You, and I seriously several because you can't get. I've been misdiagnosed before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, actually, I have a friend that I uh, talk to frequently. Lives out in Canada, but he um, he's dealing with anxiety. But one of his coping methods is like actually calling someone up and talking with them because he says that uh, the isolation is what really amplifies the anxiety. So finding someone to talk to or spend time with like a friend, it helps reduce it. So that's one way to cope with it. Uh, hopefully that helps. Yeah. Th thank you so much <laughs> for opening up. Like that. Thank Thanks. I got to top that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I have a couple of questions. One for Brad. Are you serious about doing a Jesus movie? Because I am 100% behind that. Uh, we, okay. That would be amazing. <laughs> We do, for anyone who's seen our midnight screenings show, we also go see the, the Christian movies that come out, like God's Not Dead, Do You Believe, Old Fashioned, oh man. Um, saving Christmas. Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. Yes. Oh my God. Hell yeah. Uh, and anyway, in, in one of them, I, in one of the more recent ones, I think it was the one for Do You Believe, which, by the way, it's not every day where you can get home from a movie in theaters and be, like, talking to someone and be like, I just got back from the new Lee Majors movie <laughs> with Brian Bosworth. Um, and uh, anyway, we were joking in the car saying that, like, it'd be fun to do, like, a spoof, a, a spoof movie of some of these, and my buddy Dave, who's on my site, and he, he goes to see a lot of these movies with me. He said, like, no, man, we should do it straightforward. Like, I, <laughs> that'd be hard, man. Like, I, I don't know about that. Like, and I've written movies about, like, 1980s pimps. Like, I, I don't know about this. And so, like, I, it was, it's always been an idea in my head of, like, you know, kind of a parody of some of these movies. I don't know if that would ever happen, but it would be, it would, it would be fun to do. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, I just wanted to say thank you. Your videos are amazing. Oh, thank I, you. You're just, you're just one of the smartest people I've ever seen. Aww. I just admire you so much. <laughs> thank you um, so much. How's the next uh, Viridian book coming? Oh, we're Alive! <laughs> <laughs> That's on Nella. Okay, as of yesterday, we had just gotten to the start of Act 3, and then I threw it at Lisa, because I was like, all right, I have added as much Tiger's Curse shit I could into this fucking book, where we take our heroes to India, and they find their white ass selves, and do all this stuff, and India is just the background. And so in Act 3, Riley shows up, the three triangle love thing awful happens, um... We finally, I think, discover who the bad guy is, and hopefully Lisa will have added a whole lot of stuff by the time we get back on Monday so we can finalize it, call our writers, and start it! Yeah! <laughs> that sounds amazing. Now, everyone. And We've been busy, but we're making progress. <laughs> and Nella's in I'm charge. I'm to answer all my questions. <laughs> that was amazing. And Rantasmo, I love your videos. I really wish they were longer. <laughs> huh. <laughs> <laughs> I've fair, never heard Because it's, it's just so, it's really interesting. It's oh, really fascinating. Oh, thank you. Uh, and that's, that's a fair criticism. Uh, <laughs> if I, I mean, I'm hoping at some point I might hopefully be able to do this more full, at least closer to full time. And if so, I'll definitely spend more time on each video and make, try, hopefully make them longer. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am your clone. <laughs> Hello, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I got a, I got a few questions. Uh, but uh, first of all, my name's Ashley Kranz. I of uh, uh, Dream Chaser Productions, um, and I I just love everything you guys do. I mean, my friend Amanda was the first to introduce me to Nostalgia Critic, and she was like, "Hey, you gotta see this." I'm like, "All right, okay." <laughs> and, <laughs> She's in the room. Yeah, yeah, she is. Um, yeah, uh, so, and, and Lindsay, I'm a huge uh, Transformer fan, so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't see, I got my Decepticon earrings on. Awesome. <laughs> are, are you an Autobot uh, undercover? 
uh, like, no. <laughs> I was about to say, like, it was at DJD, there's one, right? Or I don't know if you follow IDW. Yes. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> someone gets it. Yeah, I was, I was about to make a brainstorm joke, and I was like, no, that's the other way around. <laughs> yeah. So what I love on, on her Facebook, I don't know if it's the uh, private or public, but the banner now, it's the, uh, it, uh, the whatchamacallit, the... The Autobot logo that says Yeah, feminist. the Autobot logo, except my name just says feminist. <laughs> oh, no, that was one of, uh, like, one of my new Twitter friends. He, he goes by the Twitter handle uh, SJW Megatron, and uh, he, he would just kind of like make these joke things and one was like because there's a there's a new transformer called windblade who is like a bit controversial but i think she's awesome and he just did this sort of like autobot logo with the windblade makeup and it's just feminist and i was like dude do a decepticon one that says radical feminist <laughs> <laughs> and i was gonna use that but the, the the term radfem has had some negative connotations lately so i was like i'll just use feminist even though <laughs> really it should be the decepticon logo. Okay. so qu- question one um yeah, when, when someone wants to get started and being an internet reviewer, what do you recommend, uh, like what site do you recommend starting on? Like, I mean, well, you, for, for you posting get, stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've posted uh, my short movies and stuff on YouTube and it's like, ah, copyright infringement, I'm melting. You know, it's like, it's, uh, it gets pretty stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually my first advice is don't. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, no, but I was going to say don't. <laughs> I, I know, but part of it is, I mean, look, if this is just like a drop of, you know, the number of reviewers that are out there. So it is something where it's like there are a lot and it's very oversaturated. But if it's something where it's like, because I've been told don't before too, before it's all started. So if it's something where it's like, you got to do it, you're doing it for the love of it, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, that's the first step. You got to do it for the love, not for the fame or the money or anything like that. You got to do it and say, even if you fail, you're glad you did it. You're, you're glad you uh, tried it. Uh, so, but on top of that, it's, it's hard to say now because there is so much. I mean, honestly, I, I would say just kind of start with YouTube because that's where everyone is and they're searching. And try to do something different. Try to do something unique. You know, Rob went through, God, what was it, like a thousand submissions of people doing yeah. reviews and stuff? I got like well over a thousand submissions and watched every one of them. <laughs> so, and there was a lot of them that like looked alike. Um, and I, I will say this, like the biggest thing I noticed was that people who said, hi, I'm the so-and-so critic, I do it so you don't have to, like automatically that was a strike for me against them. <laughs> because I'm just like, okay, just do something different, please. Yeah, and that is a biggie. Do something different that if you were online looking, you would click on that. Yeah, you, know, you would say, I want to watch this. That looks interesting. What separates this from all the other mm-hmm. ones? Yeah, uh, my, my uh, thought was uh, to do something uh, like martial arts reviewing because uh, every time I see martial arts in movies and TV shows, I just rip it apart. Mm. I'm just like, no, that is not how it's done. And mm. also, like, you have to step up your technical game because it's like it's so different than it was in like 2008 when yeah. we oh, started. Yeah, like when you could yeah. get away with like a little four by three handy cam, and you just can't do that anymore. Like you have no. to shell out like the $700, you know, DSLR and like yeah. a real microphone, and have to buy lights and all that fun stuff. So that <laughs> yeah. that's, general that's just a reality. <laughs> general <laughs> advice I can offer, especially <laughs> the ex- <laughs> Brad is an outlier and should not be counted. <laughs> General advice I can offer. Now, if you're going to go YouTube and you're going to use copyrighted clips, keep it to only 10 seconds at a time per clip. Cut at that point to a different part of the clip. Uh, If you're going to be on screen yourself and you're going to be talking, be... uh, Capture our attention. If you're not if you're not trying to be funny, be entertaining. You we have our eyes on you, and if you're just speaking like this about the review, no one's gonna watch it for three for, for more than five seconds because it's just too boring. Command us. You have enrapture our attention and keep us fixated on you and wanting to hear what you have to say, that kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, Tim and I have a bit of an interesting story because we actually created a pilot and submitted it to Channel Awesome. We didn't have an online channel at all. Like, we created one for the submission and it had zero followers. <laughs> we had zero subscribers. And so, you know, our challenge was to create something from scratch that could compete with people who'd been doing it for years. And so, you know, we had to make sure that we had that quality at the outset. Uh, two other things, external microphone. Very important. And two, whenever you upload it to YouTube, use tags that people are going to search. Because search engine optimization, social media optimization are what are going to get you views. If you just put it out there, people aren't going to find it unless you give them a reason to be able to look for it. Right. Yeah, I had the same thing when I submitted. I only had like one video out by the time the audition process started. So my audition process was the same of uh, creating a video saying, this is what I'm going to do. Pick me. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, um, I, I guess they already hit it, but really the, I would, I would argue that the audio is even more important than the video, and it's cheaper to invest in that, so yes, work, make sure you're, make sure you sound good above everything else, and um, oh yeah, and like uh, Lewis was saying, work on your delivery, just try and sound like you would want other people to sound. If you were watching them, YouTube like. is the future. I know it's like, cause yeah. like it, it just is, and every like it's 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 a monopoly, and that's what it is. I I <laughs> will say like I completely agree with Todd. Everything I was watching, audio would be the first strike. If it wasn't visually interesting, I'm like, okay, if at least I can hear what the hell is going on, yeah. at least you know maybe the comedy is funny, and maybe like I could close my eyes and listen to a stand up routine and be fine, but. If the audio is not good and the vid, like, I literally had some people submit things that were in high def, like gorgeous video, and I couldn't make out what the hell they were saying. And I'm like, well, I can't use this. So, and like we mentioned, Brad is the outlier, but if you're gonna do something, <laughs> if you're gonna do something low quality, I mean, Brad's secret is he's reviewing low quality shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of, it kind of works for Brad, Brad's and no. Brad is really, really <laughs> funny. So you, ha like, if you're gonna go low quality, it better be the best, <laughs> funniest low quality you can come up with. Yeah. And, and actually, we make jokes about Brad doing this, but honestly, Brad's quality has actually improved considerably over the years. No, it hasn't! Okay. <laughs> Spoonie, when he did an April Fool's video parody of the cinema snob, he made sure to include the background hiss from, from Brad's old camera. <laughs> An old high eight camera that I used to have. <laughs> that I switched, not because, I, uh, this is several years ago, but I, I got a different camera, not because I was like, you know, I should get a different camera, but because it broke. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just one other piece of advice uh, to, I highly recommend like writing and rewriting your scripts. I think there's a lot of people on YouTube who can come across very amateurish because you can tell that they just like wrote their thoughts kind of free form and me and Beth put like put a lot of time just taking multiple passes and really trying to punch up jokes and things like that. Have a second person to look at your stuff yeah, because they will keep it short. Mm -hmm. short yeah. Keep it short. Yeah. Make sure to read it out. So, loud. there you go. Well, hopefully that's enough. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Hello. Hi. Lindsay. All right, so in Loose Cannon you talked about Starscream. Yep. Oh, do you want to see my wallet? <laughs> yes. I think of it. Well, anyway, go ahead. And on Twitter, you talk about the IDW comics. What is your opinion of Starscream in that comic book universe? <laughs> um, honestly, he's my favorite Starscream now yes. that I've read it. Like, I've, I'm, that's funny because I'm not a huge fan of. Oh God, he follows me on Twitter. I'm not a huge fan of John Barber's writing. Um, I think he's been getting better, but it's like it's kind of like embarrassing when you kind of go back and forth between Barber and Roberts, and like Roberts is just like, oh, and he's like. Uh, yeah, he's got some feelings. <laughs> but I, I really like the way he writes Starscream. I have a feeling Starscream is about to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will be surprised if he survives Combiner Wars. You are the only other person that I know of that reads the comic books. They're so good. He, he, sad. Yeah, he's, well, he, it's funny because, like, he read more than meets the eye in, like, two days, through two or three days, and then it took him, like, three months to get through Robots in Disguise. It's boring. <laughs> also, if you are going to be around the con, can I get a picture of you with my Optimus Prime cosplay? Sure. All right. We'll be uh, like, I think, get the, on the, we'll do the autograph thing next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the, the, like I said, there's autographs today, uh, an hour after this. Some of us are just going to go straight to the table to sell merchandise as well. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely two autographs uh, signings, one today, one tomorrow. Uh, I know a after Malcolm and Tamara's uh, panel, we're going to go down to the table as well a little early. So there are going to be other times. If you don't get in the line in time or something like that, just come find us one of those other times and we will be there. Also, I think we'll probably have different lines, right? I, uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> I think we should too, but Based yeah, on I, prior I don't know experience, how we definitely should. <laughs> and this is a question for everyone that wants to answer. What is the best thing a fan has ever said to you? Oh, God. Uh, you make my life asking better. Asking which was my favorite star scream. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it honestly is for me. Anytime someone sends me a message saying that you helped me with my depression, you helped me uh, uh, get through college, you helped me live my life, and really there's nothing else that can top that to me. Yeah, I, I was going to say pretty much the same thing. And the, the two that come to mind, one, anything that's like you saved my life, which is like, 
wow. I mean, I'm just in here being silly and stuff. I mean, people depend on that positivity, just something to watch every week, just something they can rely on in a life that is so uncertain. Uh, Which is funny considering how negative we are in our videos. No, I know, that's what's so funny, but, but it's comedy. It's taking the negative trying to turn into something positive. Uh, and also ones I've gotten from, like, soldiers that are, like, in I Iraq or Afghanistan or something like that, saying, like, I watch your stuff, like, really? Holy crap, <laughs> you know? So anything like that is just, like, the, you know, the, the huge, hugest thank you I can give to anyone for saying such words like that. I got a really passive-aggressive comment the other day that I pretty much enjoy. It's, uh, screw it, I'm subscribing so I can keep track of your uploads. You do make some interesting videos after all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're cool, I guess. Yeah, like, oh, man, now I have to subscribe to you. <laughs> No, actually, that, that is the that kind of fan that you want, day. even if they're like, I don't want to like you, but I can't I know, help like, it. That's actually a really good fan I to have, because even if they're angry, it's like, I'm still going to watch you! Because I had uploaded the video before I got here, and I got off the plane uh, after putting it back after airplane mode, and I got like a ton of comments, and I read them. I'm like, oh, day is made. Yes! The best thing a fan ever said to me was, here, take this money. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. <laughs> For me, honestly, it was the first time someone actually said, I'm a fan of your stuff. Because just, it doesn't matter, I mean, it's amazing the details you give about, you know, your experiences that you have watching the content, but the fact that you consider yourself a fan at all of something that we produce is just, that alone is just so heartwarming. Anyone else? Negative comments could be a bit fun too, because, because uh, who here recalls the please let the ads play video I made a few years ago? I still get negative comments on that on YouTube. And the only reason I'm keeping the comments going, because you know, I, I, there are days when I'm just like, I can't stand these stupid negative comments, and I feel like I want to turn them off. The only reason I haven't turned them off is on the backs of my DVDs, I put a negative comment as the quote. <laughs> so I'm collecting them now, so I have like enough for 100 DVDs. I've gotten some really nice comments from people who are either like in the closet or have just you know have just come out or just or just kind of um, questioning their sexuality or or they live in like a foreign country where they don't really know any other LGBT people and uh, they said that my videos have helped them and that's really cool I think um, so yeah that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly never know how to react to fan praise. <laughs> honestly, I go thank you and nod. So the, I think the best thing people say to me is that your dog is cute. That makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not here to save the children. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, but if, if you like my stuff, that's great. I really <laughs> appreciate it regardless. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anyone else? I okay. okay, cool. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 we do have one. We do have one. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, sorry, this is last minute, but the nicest comment I ever got is, I think this was actually before I got accepted onto Channel Awesome, and some guy said, hey, I'm taking notes on how to do a good video review, because I'm thinking about doing that, and he was like, I use yours as an example, and so that was just really nice, but I think that guy's gunning for my job now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wilmars. <laughs> um, yeah, this is for everyone. I was just wondering uh, what uh, your greatest guilty pleasures and what you review. Uh, I, I, yeah, we'll I go did back. a video about that. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, there's, uh, that we, I, I've done panels about guilty pleasures and stuff. So my biggest one, again, I, I acknowledge it's not good, but I love it because it actually got me into the books and the world and stuff like that. It's the Ralph Bakshi, Lord of the Rings. Oh my uh, God. There, there's, so, and there, no, there's so much stuff that's awful in it, but there's so much stuff where I'm like, I, I like that better than the live action. Uh, and it got me into the world, and it's when nobody was doing like any serious animation that you know looked adult. It didn't have to have happy, pappy music. There, there could be silent moments, and people could die, and it could be bloody, and there could be wars, and Tolkien is a great world you know, to do that in. Um, but Dude, but I still acknowledge it's not good. <laughs> that was all there was. What's that? It was the 70s. Yeah, it was the 70s. It's just, it's just... Hudson Hawk. <laughs> Hell yeah, Hudson Hawk. <laughs> I freaking love Hudson Hawk, unironically. I'm with you, man. I got your back on that. Hell yeah. <laughs> speaking, speaking of Brad, Brad and I both have a sick, sad love affair with Batman Returns, oh, the yeah. superior <laughs> Batman sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, thank you. Lindsay's in our team, too. Sweet. Oh, yeah. I like them both equally. 
I, anyone else guilty pleasures? Uh, guilty I don't pleasures know if I have as, any guilty pleasures. Yeah. Like, as far as shows? I know. Movies, like, or? my favorite movie shame, is... Brad. Uh, what? You have to have shame. Yeah, yeah. My f- my favorite movie is Caligula. So if your favorite movie is Caligula, <laughs> are you really that ashamed to like anything? <laughs> you like Benetti. That is not. A, that is just a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, oh, okay. Well, we like. So uh, I finally got Nella into Transformers via the IDW comics, and I was like, every time I'd go over there, I'd be like, let's get drunk and watch the cartoon <laughs> on Netflix. Like adults. And then they took it away. <laughs> and, uh, so now I have... How else am I going to enjoy Trax and his relationship with a young Puerto Rican named Raul? <laughs> Sometimes Starscream makes bombs out of bird shit. <laughs> and so that's wonderful, and it's gone. I miss that show so much. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. <laughs> you are my favorite part of this panel, by the way. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't review them, but my favorite guilty pleasure is to get a little drunk and watch really bad horror films on Netflix <laughs> and just yeah. yell and scream. It's so entertaining. She also plays the Kim Kardashian game all the time. <laughs> I, there's no, I don't know if there's any guilt there. There is not. <laughs> um, I, uh, as anyone who's ever taken me to a karaoke bar knows, my favorite, one of my favorite songs of all times is uh, Good Vibrations by Marky Mark and the oh, Funky yeah. Bunch. Yeah. Uh, anyone else feel it? Um, <laughs> as a as a casual gamer, I guess uh, one of my guilty pleasures is Five Nights at Freddy's. And is oh wow, well I, I guess I don't have to feel so guilty about it. But no, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's enjoyable in the sense of the lore. I just like the way the uh, concept was built. I mean, you might say it's a little clumsy. It's not really that well thought out. But I mean, there's something to it that makes it interesting, and it's sparked a lot of conversation at least. That's what, Cool. Anyone else? Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Go see the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, it's a super pleasure being here. I've been following you guys for many, many, many years, especially you, Doug. I've told just about everyone I can uh, know to watch you guys, and I usually bring over my laptop and be like, watch this review. It's freaking amazing. And usually they're like... I think the quest for Camelot one that you did, I like cried the first time you ever did it. I cried when I watched and it. And it's <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just so funny, and I love your your, your when you guys like you know you my combine and you do again. like crossovers and stuff like that. It's amazing. And my my main one of my questions is is that I just get so baffled when people are like, oh, like this guy, you really find him funny, and I'm just like, like are you fucking serious? Like, so, <laughs> like I think I think my question would be is what. What review have you put out that's gotten the most negative feedback that you were like surprised about? Uh, that I was surprised about? Um, I I don't know if I can say like negative necessarily, but one I thought was gonna be like a huge one. I thought this was gonna take off, break a million in like a week or something like that, and it does okay at best. Was the uh, the Power Rangers Turbo one? Oh yeah. I really thought that was just gonna be like, cause I mean we like it was like the tw- what twentieth anniversary of Power Rangers when yeah, we did yeah, that. Right. And it was just like this huge huge deal, and we got these big robots and they're fighting each other, and we had the costumes, and we talked about this movie, and it was so enjoyably bad, and like everyone that watched it. And it's like, yeah, that was good. I was like, seriously? <laughs> still, a, still a more respectful 20th anniversary thing than Megaforce was. <laughs> oh, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's the only one that was like, you know, wow, I really thought that was going to be like a huge big deal. And everyone was like, no, it's good. It's we good. get more surprised sometimes by the things that we thought were going to go over poorly but went over pretty well, like the Matrix one. I really thought we were going to get a lot of hell for that. And it turns out everybody who hated The Matrix came out of the woodwork like, yeah, right well, it, de- <laughs> it depends where you go, because on Channel Awesome, uh, they were like, you know, yeah, I didn't think it was that hot. If you look at the YouTube comments, they're like, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. man, Man of yeah, Steel was but, another one, but too. But that's the one that gets the most views. That's what's so yeah. funny about it. You should oh, do the sequels. Well, nobody watched the sequels that I did. They all want to see, I want to hate you. I have so much anger. Internet. Ah. Oh, my God. People won't shut up about Man of Steel. I'm still getting comments on the vlog I made. <laughs> Me too, man. <laughs> Just <laughs> about that movie to get people so. <laughs> Nolan, Nolan fanboys. That's what. <laughs> Joe saved my review. <laughs> oh my god. 
for some reason, uh, I guess I didn't realize I was the only person in the world who didn't like the Uga Chaka version of Hooked on a Feeling. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> Blue suede, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sweet suede. <laughs> That's my bad. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> It isn't. Anyone else got one at all? all right. I don't know. I've always been. It's like as I. I feel like I would always accurately be able to figure out what was going to do well and what was pretty consistent. Baby dolls got more hits than I thought it would. <laughs> so cool. Thank you so much. Thank I, you. I think, I think we got time for one more question. Of oh, hey, they brought Deadpool, Deadpool back already. See, uh, he's fine. See, they brought him back already. Told you guys yeah. I can't be staying dead any, for long. <laughs> Only Ben Parker and Gwen Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Doug, I have a question for you. All right. So I know that you did the uh, top 10 best and worst Avatar episodes, which I'm still stumped as to how you got Dante Bosco on that. But uh, anyway... Are you gonna, now that Korra's over, are you going to do a top 10 best and worst for that show as well? Uh, maybe. I think I liked Avatar, so maybe if I could get another voice actor. <laughs> uh, if I could get the voice actor. Uh, Calling all Korra voice actors. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's like, like that's, that'll probably be the last Avatar thing I do, unless, like, a voice actor actress comes out and like, I want to do something with you, you know, like, video-wise. I mean, that all sounds horrible, but you know what I mean. Uh, so, but, yeah, if, like, this opportunity is presented that's, like, it's too good to pass up, I'll do it, because I do like Korra. But in terms of, like, yeah, like, this has to be done, I have to represent Korra and stuff, it's, like, it's got its fan base, people love talking about it. Um, and I don't know if I'm, like, I really like it, but we did vlogs of, like, all of them, too, and we we went off for a while on a lot of them. Uh, so probably not, unless some sort of opportunity comes up that's just so good, I, I can't pass it up. So uh, cool, thank you so much, man. Yep. Oh, and, and uh, by the way, the voice of Qatar, I think er, the voice of Maya is actually here. Oh yeah, 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 no, I know, she's, uh, she's her. Oh, director. we know. <laughs> <laughs> so cool, thank you so much. And guys, we're gonna have to cut it off there, but uh, if you did not get a question answered again in an hour, we have autographs. Some of us are going to the autographs table uh, in the dealer's room so you can see us there. We have autographs uh, today, uh, we have autographs tomorrow as well. Um, and please do come to Critics Against Humanity. It is for uh, a wonderful cause. It's a charity event. Uh, we would love to have you guys there. Thank you all so much. Thank you.